What do Donald Trump, Nancy Pelosi, and Medusa have in common? A ravenous, unquenchable will to power that can turn anyone to stone if they look it straight in the eyes in an attempt to stop it. Or at the very least, have your reputation destroyed and become morally and financially bankrupt if you made a serious attempt at running against them in government. Unless, of course, you're just as power-hungry and status-driven as someone like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who are officially our next president and vice president. Then maybe that kind of skullduggery is right up your alley. After all, it was as dismaying as it was illuminating to watch Kamala tear into good old Joe as a racist and a sexist in the Democrat primaries, only to cozy up to him like a creepy uncle when he was told he better pick a woman of color as his vice president once he got the nomination, despite his clear signs of senility and demonstrable corruption. Yet after the storming of the nation's capital by Trump supporters who were led to believe that Vice President Mike Pence could overturn the Electoral College vote if he had the courage to do so, which was not only false, but reckless to say to an angry mob of people who were practically encouraged to take matters into their own hands by Trump himself, I'm finding it harder and harder to believe anyone in government. By the way, do we even need government in the first place? Especially government run by such duplicitous, hypocritical, shameless opportunists like these people. Unfortunately, yes, we do need government. Though there is no immutable law of physics that proves it needs to be run by the current ilk that makes up both the Democrat and Republican establishments. Maybe artificial intelligence will figure out how to eliminate the need for these douchebags without killing us all in the process. But for now, we need some form of government and delegation of authority since we're inextricably dependent upon one another as a species. At least government has evolved from the days of worshipping Egyptian pharaohs or having Aztec priests sacrifice children in order to appease the sun god Huitzilopochtli, or however you pronounce that obsolete god's name, until the Spaniards practically exterminated the entire Aztec culture and installed baby Jesus and the supposed Virgin Mary as Mexico's new gods to fear for centuries to come. But here in the United States, in the 21st century, where we can still claim to be the land of the free and the home of the brave, must we continue being governed by so many insufferably narcissistic egomaniacs and sociopaths who claim to be in government for public service when it's so obvious they're just in it for selfish gain? Yet those are the jerks that put in the time and effort to be in the highest levels of government. We're clearly not all created equal, and some people are way more interested in seeking power and social status than others. Because it's not so much that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's that people who seek power are usually corrupt to begin with. And those that achieve absolute power are the most corrupt of all. And for some people like Donald Trump and yes, the Nancy Pelosi's and even AOC's of the world too, there can never be enough power or even luxury for that matter. Some people just can't have enough gold-plated furniture, marble floors, and even $20,000 plus refrigerators to personally store enough ice cream for their own consumption that could feed a family of 10 homeless drug addicts in San Francisco. It's such a shame because every societal problem has a solution, but at the same time, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, especially when it comes to the self-interests of these shameless hypocrites. And many of the solutions to our problems, we already know the answers to. But thanks to all the deliberate misinformation by grossly overpaid corporate lackey supposed journalists who pander to people's liberal or conservative leanings, it's almost impossible to solve the problems. Until more people on the left educate themselves on basic, inescapable economic realities and stop deluding themselves that socialism, let alone communism, can finally work if it's done right, and until more religious conservatives on the right stop assuming that there's a guy who sent Donald Trump to save the nation from abortion by appointing pro-life judges to the Supreme Court, despite him cheating on his third trophy wife, with overpriced hookers and diverting attention from all the wasteful government spending that enriches a few while saddling the rest of this nation with an unsustainable national debt, the dysfunction and division of government in this country will grow to proportions of Greek mythology. And just like that ancient civilization that helped birth democracy itself, our nation can crumble into modern-day Greek ruins ripe to be overrun by other empires just as hell-bent on power and hegemony whose leaders don't give a damn about the lessons of history, let alone the value of human decency. Thanks for watching.